Okay, the game has started. This is game two, yellow versus free. We have yellow at the bottom left and free at the top right. The map is Coliseum, again, one of these newer maps. This map, uh, the architecture of it could make for some very interesting strategies from uh, either player. I doubt we're gonna see free proxy gate. He probably wants to play it safe because he knows how aggressive yellow is, generally speaking. I presume we're going to see Free do a fast expand. Although you don't have to fast expand on this map. There's actually a lot of, of options for Protoss on this map. Scouting on 9, not uncommon at all. You have to get that early scout out there because the first uh, few buildings, even the, uh, the timing of the first few buildings themselves, not even just what buildings he got first, um, are so critical in this matchup. Uh, the burden for Protoss is to read the Zerg and respond accordingly. Essentially, Protoss is in a defensive mode for about the first uh, eight to ten minutes until eventually the Protoss gets the opportunity to come out and try to destroy his opponent. That's just the way the game kind of ended up being, and it makes for a very interesting matchup. Zerg has so many different options of, of ways that they can tech, and it's up to the Protoss to respond to that. Now, does that mean that one race has it easier than the other? No, it just means that the, it, they just play out differently. Now, once again, we're seeing a nine pool. Yellow seems very comfortable with the nine pool build. Nine pool build actually very popular amongst pro gamers. This build became popularized about uh, maybe seven years ago when people realized that if you can get the Zerglings with speed, you can micro them so well um, and then continue to use your drones to mine minerals and start pumping hatcheries. Um, it's just a very strong build overall. Forge up and the cannons up. Double cannons. Not surprising though. That's what you got to do against a fast pool like this with the Zergling speed upgrade. As we can see once again, yellow pulling the pro uh, the drones off. The drones. Now it's up to free to keep that probe alive for as long as possible. <laughs> I think that um, I think the free was actually checking to see if there might be another hidden hatchery up there. It would be possible to do some type of really technical sunken calling. Oh wait! Oh my God! He's gonna do it again! Oh, this is why I love this guy. Yes, he's going to go for a sunk push at the entrance. Yellow, you are hot. This could turn out to be another very interesting technical game. Yellow, never um, nervous to take a major risk. This is a new map. I doubt Free has practiced against this strategy. Yellow going to go for the sunks on the high ground, break the entrance of Free where the cannon is. And you can see our observer just clicked on it. And he doesn't need the help from you, traitor sunken colony. But it looks like the probe might spot it! I think he did. However, I don't know if, um... I don't know if Protoss really has that many, uh, options. I mean, this rush could actually prove to be very, very effective. Note, he will be in range of the cannon, in range of the gateway. In range of possibly kicking Freeze ass this game. This strategy could prove to be very interesting. It's gonna be a matter of how will Free respond. Free would really want to get a Robo Bay as soon as possible. The Reaver can counteract the Sunken Colony push. And if the Sunken Colony push uh, does not prove to be effective, then Yellow loses again. A 
very fast layer. He, okay, I think he may be going for the fast hydralis den, going to get the lurkers in there after he breaks the entrance and take out that nexus. Okay, here's the first drone now out. Go drone. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. I really want to see the strategy work. That'd be so cool. And I think he needs to wait for the creep to expand. Looks like he may, um... I do believe he's going to be in range. No, he's going to go for the Spire. Maybe because he knows that the uh, Protoss will be forced to make as many cannons as possible at the entrance to stop these Zerglings from coming in here and breaking the entrance. This is a very technical rush build. The first Sunken Colony will be up. I do believe the placement of that Sunken Colony, though, is rather poor. And sorry, sometimes people say I say rather like a British guy. I don't know. I don't know how that happened. With me. Robo Bay on the way. One cannon in the back. And is this in range? Yes, it is. Go go gadget. Sunken colony spines. Um, I think he should have put the sunken colony one hex to the left because now the sunken colony can't reach the. Gateway, and that that sucks. And okay, so now we're gonna see mutalisks coming out. However, the strategy could still work out. And when I say you wanted to put the Sunga Colony one hex to the left, I meant one hex to the right. I was just testing you. Oh no, but he's gonna lose his Overlord. This means he can't get that many more mutalisks out. These probes are very susceptible to some serious harassment. He's gonna wait. He's gonna wait for the mutalis to regroup, or is he gonna go in with three? Now taking the extractor. It's gonna be a heavy mutalis harassment-based game right now with his opponent contained. And oh no, he's gonna lose a second overlord. Oh! You can see that Yellow's never really done a strategy quite like this. He should be attacking now. No, you need to. He, he really needs to be attacking like right now. Here he goes for the cannon. And I think he's going to get the cannon, but the Corsair is out. Nice micro, though, by Yellow. Will Free hold this off? It's unclear at this moment. Corsairs are on the way. Meanwhile, Free pumping Dragoons and Corsairs. Unfortunately, he did not put the Sunken Colony one hex to the right. And he will, unfortunately, be able to pump Dragoons. Dragoons and Corsairs make it pretty easy to hold off that rush. Now going for the pylon. More Mutalisks on the way. I believe three more are about to hatch. Here's a Corsair and another Dragoon. Backing away so he can bait the Corsair. No! I think Yellow's strategy may prove to be effective. If he can park those Scourge over the, um, the Stargate. Oh, and the Stargate has absolutely no power right now. The lights are out in the Stargate. But he got another pylon up. Yeah, here I go again. And I actually, you know what? Yellow might not be able to actually pull this off. Free is slowly gaining ground. He has bottom, he has control of the bottom half of the Nexus. If he can gain control of the top half, he can continue to mine from that location. Scourge does manage to hit. No, no. But the okay, he does take out one Corsair. He needs to make another pylon. Making two pylons wouldn't hurt in a moment like this. He really should make one of the pylons closer to the uh, Stargate. I don't know why he's not doing that. Now he's going to move down here to where the other two cannons are. It does not look. It looks like look, the Scourge are going to be ready for the Corsair. Half health Corsair. Not anymore. And look at this. Now he does not have control over this Nexus. Now moving over here towards the top. There is a shield battery here to try to support the Corsairs a little bit more. Free may lose this game through this ingenious strategy, which Yellow has attempted to, uh, well, he's in the process of winning with right now. Another pair of scores right now. I think this is a good game. Yes, it is! Wow, that was...
really impressive. Unbelievable game. I can't even believe that. These games are turning out to be very exciting. Uh, you can tell the free is probably impressed with that strategy too. So Yellow did manage to pull it off. Great game by... Um, wow. Really cool strategy by Yellow. So now we're going to be going to game three. I think we're going to take a brief break. So stay tuned. we got uh, the final game of Yellow versus Free coming up on it.